This is the core practical investigating acceleration and the first thing that just that would need to set up is the ramp. So if the ramp is too flat, the trolley's going to slow down, and if it's too steep, the trolley's going to accelerate due to gravity. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to adjust this trolley jack so that the trolley just starts moving down the ramp. So now any force I put on the trolley, it should continue at that same speed. It's not going to slow down and it's not going to speed up. So that's the first thing that we needed to do. The second thing that we need to do is we need to adjust the light gates. So we need to make sure that they are the correct distance apart. In this experiment, we're investigating acceleration and that acceleration should be due to the force of the weight on the end of the trolley. So that weight is going to fall and that is going to accelerate the trolley. So what we need to make sure is that the weight has not hit the floor before it hits the second light gate and we need to make sure that the weight is hanging off the end of the table when it goes through the first light gate. So if I move that there and make sure that the cord is going to interrupt that light gate then that should be set up correctly. So let's take a quick look at the equipment. So the first thing is the data logger and you plug in the two light gates into A and B and tell it you want to work out acceleration. So the higher students should realise that the light gates work out the change in speed so U is worked out by one of the light gates and V is worked out by the other light gate. The data logger is also responsible for working out the time it takes for the trolley to get from the first light gate to the second light gate. The next thing I want to quickly look at is the trolley itself. So you attach the string um, to a little anchor point at the front of the trolley. It has a safety feature at the front, which is a spring. And possibly the most important thing on here is the interrupt cord. So the interrupt cord must be put in exactly the same position each time. And it is very important that this is a set distance wide. So I always use 10 centimeters which is the same as 100 millimeters. I find that this gives the most accurate results. So you need to input this into the data logger so it knows how the distance between one point and another point on the interrupt card so it can accurately work out speed. The next thing is the light gate itself. So the light gates work because they have a bulb here which gives out infrared light and they have a sensor here and when this is not being interrupted, the sensor is sensing that infrared light. When it is interrupted, so for example by the interrupt cord, then the sensor is not sensing the light. And if the interrupt cord is moving through it very, very fast, then it is going to be interrupted for a short amount of time. If the interrupt cord is going very, very slowly, then it is going to be interrupted for a longer time. So the light gates themselves can work out speed if you tell it the distance between one point and another point on the interrupt card. And the final thing that we need to understand are the weights. So the weights are what give the force to the trolley. So they are the F in F equals MA. And because weight equals mass times gravity, we can work out how many newtons each 100 gram mass has. So each mass is 100 grams, which is the same as 0 0.1 kilograms. If we times that by gravity on Earth, which is 10, then that means each 100 gram mass has a weight of 1 newton. So each individual circular mass has a weight of 1 newton. So if you just have one, like is shown in the picture there, that is a 1 newton weight. If you put two on, that will be 2 newtons of force and so on. Okay, so I want to explain how this equipment works. So the first thing we need to understand is, how does a light gate work? So light gates work out speed. And to do that, because speed equals distance over time. What we have to do is, we have to tell 
this computer the distance from here to here. So this is 10 centimeters, which is 0 0.1 meters. If this is interrupted for one second, it will be able to work out the speed of the trolley. So 0 0.1 meters, if that interrupts for one second, it will be going 0 0.1 meters per second. What we're then going to do is, so if this goes through really fast and it only interrupts for 0 0.1 seconds, 0 0.1 divided by 0 0.1 is 1 meter per second. So the light gates work out speed by knowing the distance, the width of the interrupt card, and the time that it interrupts the light for. The next thing that we need to understand is the acceleration equation. So acceleration equals a change in speed divided by time. Because we've got two light gates, we can have a starting speed and a final speed. So the starting speed is this one here. So that is U. So this light gate here works out U. This light gate here works out V, the final speed. And what happens is, for the time between here and here, as soon as this is interrupted, it starts a stopwatch in this computer. And as soon as it starts going through the second light gate, it stops that stopwatch. So time is worked out by the data logger. This thing here is called the data logger. So the change in speed divided by time, U, V, and this works out T. So that's how it works out acceleration. We're gonna start from the same position every time. So Ryan has marked where the start line is every time. We're gonna let that go and it should accelerate. Now, if it didn't hit, the paper didn't hit any of the light gates, we will say that's a good result and we're gonna write that result down. We're then gonna repeat until we get three results that are within 0.1 meter per second squared as each other. So we're going to carry on repeating that. So during the lesson, please start with one Newton of weight. I know you want, you want to go straight for 10 Newtons of weight, but make sure the equipment's set up with one Newton and carry that on until you've got three good results. I would then go to two Newtons, then to four Newtons and then eight Newtons. So you're doubling the weight on the trolley each time. One Newton, two Newton, four Newton, then eight Newtons. If you then have time during the lesson, you can go back and do three Newtons, five Newtons and so on. But that's how I would do this experiment. Okay, so I've just made these results up, but we're gonna analyze them anyway. So what we need to understand is which of these things is the dependent variable and which is the independent variable. I apologize if you've done this lots before, but it's very important that we understand what these two things are. So the dependent variable, this is the thing that you measure. And I remember that because McDonald's measure the M and the D dependent variable, you measure the dependent variable. So I remember that as McDonald's. The independent variable, you change the independent variable. So if you remember the word chin, you change the independent, you measure the dependent. So the thing that we have changed each time, the thing that we have wanted to change each time was the weight, we could control that. And as a result of that thing changing, we have measured an increase in acceleration. So we changed the weight and we measured a change in the acceleration. So I'm obviously going over this lot because it's important in the science curriculum, but also because we need to know which axes we're gonna plot these things on, on our graph. And the, the way that graphs work in science is the thing that we change always goes on the X axis. And another useful way to remember this is because you normally change things in regular intervals. So what we did here, we had one Newton, two Newton, four Newton, eight Newton. So that is normally the easier one to plot. So on the X axis, we have the independent variable, and this is normally in nice, uh, nice intervals, nice steps. The thing we've measured, that can often be a, a little bit more messy, a little bit harder to plot. So my made up results, very easy to plot, but yours are probably far more difficult. They might even be to three decimal places, but you're gonna do a scatter plot with weight on the bottom and acceleration on the y-axis. 
and what you should find is if you plot your results you should get a nice straight line and the reason why is that's because these things are directly proportional so if you double the force on the trolley the acceleration should also double if you times the weight on the trolley by eight times the acceleration should also go up by eight times if this is not true this is probably because your ramp was either too steep or it was too shallow so the trolley was either speeding up too much or it wasn't speeding up enough so you've got either friction or gravity working against or with the trolley so if your results were wrong that is probably the reason why so next thing you're going to do after you've done the experiment is plot your graph and then analyze your results are they correct if they are why if they are not why are they not and that's the end of this video make sure you do any worksheets attached to this on the VLE thank you so much for watching and good luck for your upcoming tests